Yo, this video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey guys, before you watch this video, be sure to go down below and not smash that like button. Why would you like a video you haven't watched yet? And why would YouTubers ask you to do that? Your pressing of the like button is a valuable thing that you should only do to videos that deserve it. If midway through or after the video you laugh or learn something, feel free to press that like button. As a matter of fact, I encourage it. But only do it if you gain value from the video, not just because some dude on the internet tells you to before the video even starts. That being said, if you liked this bit, uh, be sure to press that like button. Hey guys, so I was just minding my own business the other day, and Bo Burnham decided to drop the trailer for his new movie, Eighth Grade. <gasps> he has spoken. The topic of today's video is being yourself. Being yourself can be hard, and it's like, aren't I always being myself? And yeah, for sure. But being yourself is like not changing yourself to impress someone else. It's weird because Bo Burnham always seems to know exactly the struggles I'm going through at exactly the right time. Like I remember when I first listened to his song, Art is Dead. Okay, that's great, Alex, but you just gotta do the line with some more gusto. What? You know, you gotta be loud and engaging for the audience. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm gonna talk about today. What I'm finna talk about today. You gotta appeal to the youth demographic. Uh, okay, um back to the actual video. I was in Yosemite. It was actually the same time I filmed the Spider Case video. It was the middle of the night and I was going down a YouTube rabbit hole, as one does in the middle of the night. I saw that video suggested to me in the recommended video section and I'd actually seen it there before, but I never clicked on it because from the title I thought it was about painting or something because that's what I thought all art was for some reason. And I just remember sitting on my bed, clicking the video and then literally freezing up because the video was so spot on when it came to all the things I was scared was wrong with me. Ah! Bo Burnham has done it again with his new movie, Eighth Grade, coming out this July, and early reviews say the movie focuses a lot on the differences between the main character's online self and real life self. And that hit home, because I've been thinking about that a lot. When I started this channel, my technicality personality <laughs> that rhymes. When I started this channel, my technicality personality was exactly the same as my real life personality. Hey guys, I'm here, let's get technical. You don't need me to tell you that I'm super psyched and super happy to be doing this video. But why? I was so young and so small. But over time, my real life personality had evolved and taken a different path. This is a, this is a spider? I don't really know what this is. But my technicality personality had stayed fairly consistent and for good reason why, this is just weird now. I think my technicality personality is way more entertaining and way more good for this medium than my actual personality. Like imagine if I act in my videos exactly how I act in real life. Hey guys, uh, I'm here. Uh, let's get technical. Today, I want to talk about memes. I'm really happy to see this Simpsons meme blowing up. Uh, I think it's a lot of that to me IRL, for me IRL action. It's not being oversaturated, which is good. Uh, and it's a big mood right there. So, you know, it's, it's all good. That's not at all entertaining. This clip over Rock is more entertaining because, I mean, you don't know if The Rock's gonna, like, do something. Likewise, imagine if my actual personality was exactly how I acted in my YouTube videos. Okay, kids, welcome to English class. What did you think of the reading? Hey, my English teacher, I'm here with the God of Small Things analysis. Let's get technical. What I found really interesting was Erin Dottie Roy's use of childlike words even when describing intense subjects. She'll often push together two words to create a new compound word that's usually used as an adjective. This can be seen when she writes the word sky blue around 30 times throughout the entire book. We actually did read this book in English class, and it's pretty good, but it ends in like the worst way possible for every single character, like everyone either dies, commits incest, is a bad person, or just kind of ends up in a bad situation, so. Almost every YouTuber has to deal with the difference between their online self and their real self. The only YouTuber I can think of who's like exactly how they are in their videos in real life is Michael Stevens from Vsauce. Like I've heard he's actually Vsauce-y all the time, and I'm so glad to hear that because if not, I would totally lose faith in humanity. In the coming months and videos, I really want to take time to define my personality and see how my online persona relates to my offline persona. My online persona has stayed pretty consistent and my offline persona seems to be all over the place, which just feels weird, but it's always consistently not my online persona. Okay, this video is getting too sad and pathetic. Just, uh, just be your usual technicality self. No, that's the whole point. I feel weird that there is such thing as a technicality self and a non-technicality self, but at the same time, my technicality self is way more entertaining and charismatic and better for YouTube. So what do I do to reconcile these two things? Dude, I don't know. I'm just a figment of your imagination constructed to get more views. I don't even exist. That's how we're gonna end this bit? Seriously, that's, uh, okay. So here's the challenge. How do I make both my offline and online persona something I'm happy with? How do I stay true to myself in real life and how do I have an entertaining persona online? For my offline persona, Anna Akana has this system where she would basically just chart out what the ideal self would look like and then she would break it down into these six categories. And then you can see what your ideal self is and what your actual self is and then see the differences between the two and see what you have to do to be the person you want to be. And then you can kind of work towards those concrete goals and make sure you're 
living a life you actually want to live. Side note, notice how I'm being kind of wishy-washy with actually saying being yourself? Because I'm less interested in being yourself and more interested in finding who yourself is. Whoa, that's deep. 10 out of 10 deeps. For my online persona, here's how I've approached it. There are three channels on YouTube I literally can't watch more than five videos of or my mind will just explode and not be able to function because their videos are so good. Those two channels are Austin McConnell, who you should totally check out, and the two we're going to talk about today, Nathan Zed and Wendover Productions, because they represent two different elements of videos that I'm, I'm really trying to work on. On the one hand, we have Sam from Wendover Productions, whose content and ideas and meat of his videos are so so phenomenal. Like every one of productions video I watch, I think, what? How? What? Uh, what? What? Questions. Like China's geography problem. That's so ingenious. How do you even like think of that? Was Sam just like sitting there one day and suddenly thought, yeah, you know what? China does have interesting geography. It's so amazing. And then on the other hand, we have Nathan Zed, whose voice and personality and comedy is just impeccable. He could literally talk about anything and make it engaging to the point where I think like just how? I really want to work on trying to get these two different sides of what I think is the same coin down really well. I think I've been getting a lot better at content, not as good as Sam, of course, but, you know, getting better. Like, the sources from the first couple of videos I made were basically just links to Vsauce and ASAP Science videos. Now, I'm really proud of stuff like the Illusion of Explanatory Depth video or the Why Do Cable Companies Have Monopolies video because they're unique. You can't find them anywhere else on YouTube. But while my content has evolved, I think my voice still has some ways to go. I think my jokes can be better. I think they can be more risky. And, well, as much as I love puns and references and all that, and they're definitely not going away, don't think that they're relatively easy and safe. And my favorite type of art is art that does take risks. Like, don't you just hate it when someone's like, you know when you get your meal and your waiter's all like, enjoy your meal? And you're like, you too? <laughs> Get it? Because that joke was funny once, when Brian Regan did it first in 1997, before I was even born. I'm really young. The art and comedy I really like and really appreciate isn't easy or safe, like Bo Burnham or Watsky or Bojack Horseman. And I've been working on that, and y'all have been noticing, which is kind of what prompted me to make this video, so thank you, genuinely. I, I really want to continue to work on it and make it better for you. This segues me nicely into... Eh, eh, see, I, I can keep it going across videos. What, what is, what is this hand... <laughs> This segues me nicely into my second fear of my voice on YouTube, which is that it's my voice on YouTube. Right, so the situation I'm in kind of reminds me of Logic. Okay, let me just preface this by saying I'm a big fan of Logic. I, I personally love his music. He's probably one of my top five favorite artists. As a matter of fact, I'm repping that Logic merch. However, while he does make some really, really good music, some, like my boy Banthony Bantano and other music critics have criticized him, admittedly rightly so, for sounding so much like his influences. Logic wears his influences very proudly on his sleeve, and there's nothing inherently wrong with that, but Mr. Fantano has criticized him for sounding too much like Kendrick Lamar, or too much like J. Cole, or too much like Drake. I can't help but feel like his style is just a composite of his contemporaries. The problem is that he just doesn't really have a, a strong, distinct sound that when I hear it, I know I'm listening to a Logic song. I don't think there's another artist out there who comes off to me as being as much a hip hop artist as he is a hip hop fan. This is my biggest fear with my voice in my videos. Obviously, I too wear my inspirations very, very proudly on my sleeve. You can easily see inspiration taken from Vsauce and Jax Films and many other amazing people. Heck, when I pitched this video itself to you guys, I even described it as a very nature Nathan Zed-esque video. I mentioned how my content has evolved from being heavily inspired to being pretty unique, but I feel like my voice hasn't really evolved in the same way and to the same extent. How do I define my own voice? How do I define my own style? Anthony even says Logic sounds more like a hip-hop fan than a hip-hop artist, and that's what I'm really afraid I'm becoming. I'll always be a YouTube fan, but never a YouTube artist. To summarize this whole video, I want to work on making my offline persona as best as it can be, and I want to make my online persona reflect that more, but I also want it to be entertaining and charismatic. And while doing all of that, I want to try to continue to find my own voice amidst all my inspirations. So yeah, that's what's been on my mind. You can follow me on Instagram to encourage my narcissism, and you can follow me on Twitter because I'm about to hit a thousand followers over there, so let's get there, yee! Hey, hey, a uh, quick money update. I should put on a suit. Whoa, it's magic. Thanks to your support on Patreon and by using my sponsors, I've been able to buy a new microphone and get audio that doesn't sound like it was recorded in the middle of a windstorm. This is the Sennheiser MKH416. Uh, it's known as the gold standard for shotgun mics, and it's actually the one Marquez Brownlee uses. I'm really happy with this purchase. I hope it steps up my audio game, and I hope it makes my videos even more enjoyable for you. And, and like I've said, I've got my sponsor, Brilliant.org, to thank for that. Listen, we've talked about Brilliant.org before in literally the last video at that, so you already know that Brilliant has amazing math and science courses that engage you in fascinating problems and help you understand big concepts that a 
deeper level. But what I want to talk about today is how Brilliant.org actually like helps technicality. They've signed on not only to sponsor this video and the last video, but a variety of upcoming videos. So they've shown to me that they're dedicated to help technicality grow and improve by sponsoring my videos, which really means a lot to me. This is on top of the fact that they're a great source of inspiration for videos. The courses are really fun to do in my free time. So if you want to support this amazing company that's helping me do bigger and better things, go to Brilliant.org slash technicality and sign up for free. Like you have literally nothing to lose. Plus, if you like it, the first 200 people to use that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. I also want to give a huge thank you to all my patrons over at patreon.com slash technicality, especially these people on screen and all Strawberry and Scott Robinson, who are pledging $99 and $100 respectively. That is utterly amazing. I am perpetually in disbelief. Thank you so much. That is that is crazy. Thank you. Also, what did you think of this video? Did you like it or do you want me to stick to education? These videos are kind of like public diaries or journal entries or whatnot, so I can kind of document what I'm thinking of and when, so I kind of like making them every once in a while. But if you like these sort of videos, maybe I'll sprinkle them in occasionally, so like once or twice a year, or maybe I'll even make them their own series. Or, or maybe the name Q with A could take on another meaning, like instead of you asking me questions, I ask the questions on my mind about life, the universe, and everything. Whoa, another 10 out of 10 deeps. That's 20 total deeps. What am I doing with my hands? Bye, y'all. Nothing matters. So it doesn't matter if nothing matters. And while you be, be true. And if you won't, f you. Burn your clothes. Open the wine. Close your eyes. Freeze time. <laughs> <laughs>